Hi everyone, this is Crystal, and today I am going to be creating a layout with the August release from Colorcast Design. So I thought I would start by just showing you some of the pieces that I received in my design team box. So um, there are these three little title pieces. It says Crisp Air, Sweater Weather, and Falling Leaves. I really love the color palette of this release. Then there are these acrylic leaf shapes, which are absolutely gorgeous in those same colors. And then wood veneer, it says fall days, some leaves, I love autumn, pumpkin kisses and harvest wishes, fall breeze, autumn leaves, I love fall most of all. And then this gorgeous piece, which I saved the best for last, it says Autumn Splendor in white, and then there are all these little pieces to fill in oops, the letters. If I get them in the right spot, um, that might be this one. There. There's the little piece for the A as well. So those are the pieces I received. Oh, if I can get that in there, there. Um, those are the gorgeous pieces I received. Today I want to create one um, using this sweater weather and possibly this one and maybe one more of these wood veneers. I'm not sure, I might use the leaves as well. I haven't quite decided, but uh, I have these two photos, which are kind of strange, I guess. Um, it's me wearing a sweater that my mom knitted and gave to me. And she took these photos so that she could post them on Ravelry uh, on her account. But I thought that the lighting was just perfect and it shows off this gorgeous sweater that she made um, that I am super anxious to wear this fall. We're not quite in sweater weather yet. Uh, this was actually a warm day, but I'm anxious to wear it for the fall. So I think that this all applies. Uh, as for other supplies, I am going to use the um, Just a Little Lovely collection. So this is what I have from that collection. It is not a fall collection, but it has all these gorgeous pinks and yellows in it. And I think that if I pick and choose um, papers and embellishments, I can make it really work with, with uh, these gorgeous um, pieces from Colorcast Designs. So that is my plan. I am going to go ahead and put you on fast forward and see what I can come up with. I'm going to start by going through the supplies that I have in this bin for, of Just a Little Lovely. And I'm just gonna start pulling out things that I think might work with my color scheme. So like I said before, I'm looking for tones of yellow and pink and orange to kind of go with my photo and with those color cast design pieces. So I'm trying to stay away from the blues and the purples in this kit. So there are lots of colors and lots of papers that would have worked. I pulled out a couple scraps that I had. And then I also grabbed this black and white floral. I'm going to try to use the black and white floral as my background, but it doesn't end up working. So you're going to see here in a second, I had to step away and I forgot to turn the camera on right when I came back, but you didn't really miss much. I just laid everything out on that black and white floral to see if I could make it work as a background. I have that other paper at the top. I was thinking of using it as a border. And then I have the one behind my photos that I was thinking of using to map my photos. And then I'm just going through the ephemera pack to pull out any uh, yellow and pink pieces from it. Looking through the rest of the embellishments, I have this gorgeous pack of acetate florals. And there are some that you can you can see there are multicolored. And then there are some that are just gold and clear. So I'm looking for the ones that are just gold and clear. I don't want to bring in any of those other colors. I just want some texture on the background. And as soon as I start laying these down, I realize that is just way too busy. It is not going to work on the floral background. So I'm going to have to switch to a plain background. I'm going to grab a white sheet of paper from my stash here in just a second, but I wanted to see if I could use that black and white floral underneath my photo. So I went to the six by six paper pad to see if that pattern was in there and it is. So I'm going to grab both of those. I'll only, only end up using one of them, but I will use it uh, as part of my photo mat. So 
just scooching everything over to a sheet of white cardstock. This is basil marshmallow cardstock. Um, normally I only use that when I'm going to do mixed media, which I'm not doing here, but I wanted a smooth white cardstock, not a textured one. And this is the only smooth white cardstock I have in my stash at the moment. So that is what I grabbed. So I'm just kind of rearranging everything. Once I had the white background and those gold acetate florals, it all just came together really quickly. So I knew that I wanted my photos kind of overlapped in the center of my layout, that then there was the perfect spot for that sweater weather piece up in the corner. And um, then of course the other two clusters made sense on the diagonal. And then I'll end up adding my title kind of opposite um, on the di diagonal from the sweater weather piece. So it all just came together really quickly. All there is to do really is to put it all together and to make those final decisions when it comes to embellishment. So I'm gonna mat my photos on this paper here. This is a scrap um, from the 6x6 paper pad and then I think I use the other 6x6 piece to back the other photo. I'm just leaving a really thin border of this paper. It has all those pinks and orange and yellow tones in it. Oh, I had to go away and uh, find some new glue there for a second. My, my tape runner ran out, uh, which always seems to happen when I'm filming and not when I'm not, but that's okay. Uh, so I matted both of those photos and then I want to add this black and white floral, but I don't want to just do another mat. So what I'm thinking of doing is just adding a small piece of it, like a sliver of it down the side of, uh, of each of my photos, but on opposite sides, if that makes sense. Um, it, it might be easier just to watch what I'm doing. But I just added a bit of foam behind just the side of my photo and um, added just a strip of that black and white floral. And then I am gonna do the same with the other photo as well. But I decided to tear that one um, just because it felt like it needed a little bit more texture. I wanted to add just a little bit more texture to the page since I don't have any mixed media or any pattern on the background. It felt like it needed just a little bit more. So uh, that helped with that problem. And then I'm just gonna start layering all these things together. Um, I do only have, or only have foam on the one photo uh, because they're overlapping. I didn't want it to be two dimensional. So I'm only adding foam to the one side. Uh, I do uh, add a bit of twine to the top of that tag. Um, I didn't really want the sentiment on the tag. I just really wanted it as a layering piece. So I just tucked it into a spot where the sentiment couldn't be seen and then just added this uh, brown and white twine at the top in a little bow. And then I will uh, layer it with the other pieces that I have in that top corner here in just a second. So to adhere these acetate pieces, I debated for a while because I wasn't really sure the best way to do it. What I end up doing is only adding adhesive where something is overlapping and um, not adding any adhesive to the acetate where you can actually see it. So uh, you'll see here in just a second, I will glue down that sweater weather piece uh, with some liquid glue and because it overlaps that acetate piece, that's enough to hold that in place. So I didn't really need to add any additional glue to the acetate piece itself. Uh, right now I'm just looking for some other embellishments that I can tuck into these clusters. Um, there were some in the mixed embellishment pack that had uh, like the enamel shapes and a few enamel dots and some buttons. And uh, I found a couple of those that will work. There you can see I added some adhesive to the back of that tag and then stuck that down to the acetate piece. That holds the acetate piece to the tag. And then I, when I glue down the whole picture, um, the whole thing will be stuck into place and the acetate won't go anywhere. I did get out my, uh, my square ruler my T-square ruler, just to make sure that things were centered. I sometimes have a problem on these big blank pages getting things uh, in the center and end up having to uh, fix that later on, but I remembered this time to actually get out my T-square and make sure things were fairly centered. I'm not being super picky about having it exactly in the center. I just want it generally centered so it doesn't look lopsided later when I'm done with all of the embellishing. So here is where I grabbed some liquid glue. This is actually the brand new uh, Smart Craft Glue from scrapbook.com. Uh, it is 
quickly becoming my new favorite liquid glue. It has a really fine tip on it, so you don't have to uh, add it to a smaller bottle. I'm actually using this small one uh, right now because I, I feel like it's easier to maneuver to try and get these small things adhered. I used it on the back of my acrylic piece, and uh, it is white, but it dries clear and matte, so you can't see it at all. Unlike the glossy accents I was using before, which obviously dries glossy, this you can't see at all if I get a little bit outside of the line of the of the uh, acrylic piece. Uh, so that was how I glued down the acetate piece up there, just by gluing that sweater weather piece with liquid glue and adding it over the top. So I'm just adding all the other little bits now. I have this wood veneer circle that's going at the bottom of my right photo. Because it's overlapping that photo and the photo is popped up on some craft foam, I did grab out my uh, thicker foam squares. These are from American Crafts and uh, they're not my favorite because they are super thick. But when I'm layering things over the top of other things that are popped up, then you need that that um, extra thickness of foam. So it worked really well for that. And then I will pop up this other uh, circle wood veneer piece with just some craft foam because it's going over the, the photo that is flat on the page. And popping those up allows me to tuck those acrylic leaves uh, behind the wood veneer and I really like the way that that looks. So again, I just use that same liquid glue from scrapbook.com to adhere down all of those uh, acrylic pieces. And then um, I'm going to add the two little word strips from the ephemera pack below the sweater weather piece and uh, tuck in those other little embellishments that I had pulled out, including that enamel circle and the little button at the bottom. Uh, and then I felt like it needed just a little something more in each of these clusters. So I grabbed the enamel dots. I considered using the pink ones or the kind of corally pink ones, but I'm going to end up going with just these off-white ones. Uh, I really liked how that kind of tied in the the leaf uh, acrylic piece that's off-white. It, it almost matches that. So it kind of adds some of that color to the other clusters and just adds a little bit of something extra, another texture, um, another... Uh, kind of embellishment on the page. So for my title, I am going to use these tiny alphas that were part of this collection. I'm sticking with, again, the pinks and yellows and oranges and spelling out knitworthy. Uh, it's a, a joke that a friend of my mom makes. Um, anytime somebody uh, gets something that my mom knitted, then you are knitworthy. You are worthy of the time it takes to uh, knit one of these gorgeous pieces of clothing. Um, so she actually, uh, the photos are of, of her sweater that she made actually for herself and didn't end up liking and gave it to me. And, I, and even, even though um, it wasn't made for me, I was pretty honored to receive something as beautiful as this sweater. I, I can't imagine how long it took her to make it. Uh, but, and it is gorgeous. I cannot wait to wear it this fall. Okay, so there my title is just tucked into that little nook between the two photos at the bottom, and I'll add my journaling just below that. Right now, I'm looking for something to go into that top corner next to the sweater weather piece. There is a little blank space below the acetate floral that just looks a little bit awkward to me, and I want something to fill it in. I tried using just a puffy heart, or not heart, a flower, a puffy flower from the puffy words and icons, uh, but it just wasn't quite the right size. So I went back to those mixed embellishments and found this layered cardstock embellishment that works pretty perfectly in that spot. I just had to work a little bit to get it tucked into all the right places so that you could still read everything that was up there and nothing was obscured, uh, but that it covered up that, that blank space. So I'm just adding a few more enamel dots to that top cluster. And then uh, to finish off this page, I felt like it just needed a little bit more at the top and bottom. You can see me picking it up to look at it straight on just to get a really good feel for what it needs. And I'm going to resort back to my kind of tried and true method of just adding um, some strips of pattern paper behind some torn bits on the top and bottom of this page. I'm just trying to figure out which one I want to use. Those um, two that I had tried were were um they had they had like a stripe that kind of ran uh vertical down the middle of it and i didn't really like the way that that looked so 
I was just searching for a piece of paper that wouldn't have that stripe but would also have enough color to bring in all the colors from the page. Uh, I found a couple that are actually really light and I like the way that that looks. It almost just blends in with that white background but it, it gives a little bit more texture because of the ripped and uh, kind of frayed edge that I created uh, on the paper. And uh, because this paper that I'm using to back it has a kind of a mixed media look to it. It just it just adds that little something extra that the page needed. So I'm going to add my lines of journaling with a gold gel pen. Um, this is this is a pen that I totally forgot I had. Actually, it came free with something else I purchased. I don't even remember what it's, but I hadn't even used it. Uh, it was still in the packaging of the um, other thing. I I think it it was something card make. I think it was maybe envelopes that I purchased. Yeah. So a few weeks back, I took it. I found it in the in the packaging, and then just set it aside next to uh, my desk in the little um, cart. I have some pens, and totally forgot about it. But when it came to this page, I was like, "Oh, gold pen. That would be perfect." So I grabbed it, and I actually really love this pen. It has a super fine tip, which, if you know me, that is always what I'm looking for in a pen, uh, and it writes really well. Um, unlike some gel pens that I've had in the past that don't really write very well. This one was perfect. So hopefully it lasts long enough to use it for a few layouts at least. I wish I could link it, but again, it was just a freebie with, with I think some envelopes I purchased. So um, I don't have a link for it, but yeah, uh, it's a good one. Okay, finishing off the page with some uh, Heidi Swap Color Shine in gold, and then that's it. So here are some close-ups. I hope that you enjoyed watching this process. I will link the ColorCast Design goodies down below and uh, anything else that I've used here that is available will be linked below as well. Um, if you did enjoy this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you back here soon.